Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. Today's video we're going to be talking about coping the talons and beak of a bird of prey. Now, uh, my apprentice, Corey, uh, he is flying a red-tailed hawk. We trapped it last year. Uh, we're going to uh, visit with Corey and we're going to cope his bird's beak. Now, what is coping? Birds on their talons and their beaks, they have bone underneath but there is keratin, which is a chemical that grows out, just like your fingernails, same exact thing. Your fingernails are constantly growing, but there's a bone underneath in your fingertip. Same thing on your beak, on the talons, uh, they keep, the beak keeps growing and growing and growing. Now in the wild, birds of prey do not have as rich of a diet and they're burning through more calories as far as their activity. No matter how often you fly your bird, it's not gonna be as active in captivity and it is gonna have a richer diet than in the wild. And because of that, the keratin of the beak and the talons can keep growing. Now, water helps that slough off in layers, but still, especially with red-tailed hawks, a lot of times they don't like to spend a lot of time sitting with their feet in the water. If you do, if you get them wet, keep those feet soaked fairly often, then that can help keep those talons trimmed. But the beaks, normally every year at the end of the molt, you do have to trim the beak down. So uh, in the old days, we used files. Nowadays, I use a Dremel. It works nice and fast and easy. And I get the basics of the shape in. I'm not gonna do it absolutely perfectly uh, because again, the wear and tear and the water on the beak uh, is gonna help sharpen it up to where it needs. I just want to get rid of the overgrowth. So let's visit with Corey and let's uh, go ahead and see what it's like to cope the beak and talons of red-tailed hawk. Hello everybody, my name is Corey Collum. I'm a licensed falconer here in Utah. I'm also Ben's apprentice. This is my red-tailed hawk. Her name is Anvil. We trapped Anvil on January 3rd of last of this year and she was infested with mites um we tried for three separate days to trap red tails ben and i just had no luck over and over and over again found a couple of them in salt lake just could not get them to come down whatsoever and then when we found her in saratoga springs she immediately came down was on the trap had a bit of a mite problem but we got everything taken care of got everything treated she is now molted in and her feathers are looking absolutely gorgeous. Molt went very, very well, but in molt, they eat a lot and lot of rich food, which causes the beaks to overgrow. So today we're going to be coping the beak and coping her talons. Her talons are looking a little rough for wear. But other than that, it's going to be a good day. We're going to be coping most of the day. Go ahead, let's see. Yeah. Like there? About like there. Okay. We could maybe, yeah, about like that. That all so far for the water. One. Okay, so the coping went well. We were able to get all of our talons looking nice and clean again. Water is really going to help slough off a lot of those excess parts and burrs that we couldn't get with the Dremel. Also, her beak is looking way better. It's a lot shorter, a lot more uniform now than it was before. Again, as she gets wet, as we spray her down, stuff like that, you're going to see that that beak shapes out very, very nicely. So we shouldn't have any problem whatsoever with her cleaning up the rest of it by herself. Unfortunately, first year birds going into their second year, they don't bathe all the time. So there's going to be a lot of it where we're spraying her feet down, where we're soaking her feet for her because they just don't really understand bathing in a bath pan. But here within a couple of weeks, we'll give some update shots, show you guys how she's looking. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing kind of the process and the step-by-step -step of what it takes to coat the beak of a red-tailed hawk. Again, uh, experience helps it uh, go further and further. But uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing how this works. This is a vital skill to learn for animal husbandry of any kind when you're working with raptors uh, or any bird, really. The beaks can get overgrown. You gotta know how to be able to do this. So I hope this video was useful to you. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or wanna share your experiences with coping, uh, please let me know down in the comments below. And as always, happy hawking.